Well, hey there, folks. Uh, welcome back once again. Welcome to the Hop House. Uh, we're rolling away with the videos now, aren't we? So, uh, we uh, last video we discussed uh, several different beer styles, uh, and we'll be uh, sampling several different beer styles throughout the channel as it goes on. Uh, time for uh, beer review number two now, and this is one of my personal favourites, um, or what I call a regular beer. Um, it's regularly available at all supermarkets, even discounters are involved. You can get this at Aldi, you can get it at Lidl, you can get it at Asda, Tesco, Sainsbury's, Morrison's, Co-op, um, pretty much any supermarket that you go to uh, in the UK you can get this. It is done by a mainstream brewery. Now there may be some beer snobs out there that go, oh, you can't drink something brewed by a mainstream brewery. Oh yes you can, and you know what? You can damn well enjoy it too. So what beer am I talking about? I am talking about one of my personal favourites. It is Hob Goblin Gold. Ooh. Now, uh, we're going to do this beer review in two parts. Two parts, you say? How's that possible? Because uh, Hob Goblin Gold is available in bottle. It is also available in can. Bottle, can. So that's where the two parts comes from. Um, now, this is a beer that is actually a cast off, I suppose, from the original Hobgoblin. Uh, it's brewed by Witchwood Brewery, which are based in Whitney in Oxfordshire, a place I have not yet been. Gotta go and do the um, brewery tour because I absolutely love um, the beers. The original Hobgoblin uh, I came across uh, many years ago in Scarborough, of all places. Uh, it's a ruby beer, and I will be reviewing that on the channel. I just haven't got any at the minute. Um, but it's, it's very dark, sort of ruby red colour, rich uh, in taste, a lot more malty. It's got like a fig and a raisin feel to it, um, and a little bit of sweetness. It, it's very rich, it's 5.2%, it's, it's sort of getting towards a stronger side. Uh, but this is Hobgoblin Gold, it's like um, Hobgoblin Ruby's little brother. Now, uh, as I say, it's brewed by Witchwood Brewery. It's been taken over by Marston's a few years ago. So when we say big brewery, uh, Marston's Brewery is massive. They've got several sort of side breweries as well. Um, some people say that you know the beer's been ruined by Marston's taking it over all those years ago. It's not the same as it used to be and da 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 da. I never drunk it back then. Um, I can only go by what I know. Now. You can get it, as I say, in a cannon bottle, which we have here. You can also have it uh, on cask in a pub, um, of the days when pubs were open. Now, um, it does have two different strengths, as does the ruby version, the original Hobgoblin. Uh, now, it comes at 4.2% on cask, which is your, you know, your hand-pulled um, ale in the pub. Uh, it also comes at 4.2% here in the can. Uh, and then the bottled version, for some reason is slightly different at 4.5 percent not a massive difference but it is quite interesting how um the two different the can and the bottle have different strengths different a abvs so i thought it'd be a good idea to crack open the can crack open the bottle see if they taste any different it's supposed to be the same beers it's marketed as the same beer so um it is described as such here um, it says a solid gold legend combined of four hop varieties infused with malted barley and a touch of wheat uh, give this easy drink of golden beer tropical aromas of citrus and passion fruit and biscuit like malt gives way to the helps of fresh lemon and lime zest um, hop kick riot of refreshment so there you go that's how it's advertised uh, on the bottle now it does contain um, some American hops, in the last video I, I discussed about American hops um, and it contains uh, a, a New Zealand hop as well according to the hop profile, uh, not quoted actually on the beer but what I've seen online on several beer websites, um, it does contain American and New Zealand hops which sounds good to me. So we'll crack up with the uh, bottle first. Uh, and we'll stick this in, uh, you know, before I add the Purity um, Brewery glass. We'll stick that in the Purity Brewery glass. Now this was refrigerated, but it's been out the fridge for a bit. Um, I did say 
in my first beer review that I do like my beers in the fridge, um, but it's sort of probably come up to the temperature it should be. Hence, the first beer review had no head and this has got a decent head to it. Um, so that is the bottled version. Uh, as we can see, it's, um, I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, yeah, you can, it's good light. It's sort of a golden colour, should be, it's, it's, it's a hobgoblin gold at the end of the day. Um, and it's got a um, nice little bit of uh, white head on it. And before we delve into that, I'm going to pour the beer um, from a can and see what we get. Now I do have a hobgoblin glass for a hobgoblin beer. Oh, it's like I'm prepared for this. So uh, we'll crack open the, uh, the can. It's not got a widget in it or anything like that. Um, it's not one of them beers that has a widget. Widget. So again, we'll pour this into the glass and see what we get. Some people have the preferences whether they like the beer canned or bottled. I bother as long as it tastes good. I drink it out of a skip. Now, yeah, my pour is not very good on that one. Got uh, quite a large head. Well. So yeah, as I said, the can is 4.2%. It looks so fizzier in the can, doesn't it? I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera, but that does look really fizzy. There's something going on in there, almost like there was a widget in the can. Could stick a flake in that, look at the head on that. Now I've been told that, um, I've been told by some people that the beer in the can is more refreshing. Um, the stronger one in the bottle is hoppier. I'm still intrigued as to how you get the beer. I'm not a brewer, so I don't know. And I don't claim to be a professional. I'm just intrigued at how the same beer, out of two different things, can be slightly different strengths. Just interested, that's all, because I'm a bit sad. So, um, I'm going to go for a smell then on the uh, bottled version. Now, as I explained uh, earlier in my first, uh, first beer review, you do get some uh, vloggers out there that pick up all these wonderful smells of pine needle and orange peel and all these crazy mango fruits and stuff like that. I never, I never seem to pick that up. But my nose probably doesn't work probably since I was a kid. I always seem to be getting colds and I've, um, I don't know, just never worked. So uh, I'll give it a sniff, I'll give it a sniff, we'll see what we got. Yeah, you see to me, I can smell the, a bit of sweetness, so that's probably from the, the malted barley that says on the uh, on the bottle. Um, I'm not really getting any major bitterness in terms of some... If you've ever had a really hoppy beer, you'll smell it and you go, oh, straight away, oh. I'm not getting that from this. It smells like a beer. Not... Not as light as a lager one, but it's, it's still smelling nice and refreshing. Okay, so we'll uh, gonna go ahead and give it a taste now. So uh, bottoms up, everyone. Mmm. I do like this beer. So what am I getting? I am actually getting. Um, there is some sweetness there, which will come from the uh, the malt, uh, and the fact you know the, the malt in the beer tends to sort of add the sweetness. Um, there is now there is actually a, a hot bitterness lingering on the tongue, which probably may come from the the American hops and the New Zealand hops that are in there. The hops we're talking about, I don't know the exact hops. I've been I've read that it's Citra. Um, in terms of American hops and Nelson Sorbin, which is a New Zealand hop. So, uh, so there should be a, a, a decent enough amount of hop content in there. Um, there is actually, I know it mentioned on there the lemon and lime. I am sort of getting a bit of limey taste at the side of the tongue, actually. Never thought I'd say that. Limey taste down the side of the tongue. Cracking really is lovely. Um, one of my go-to beers, usually the main fact that this bottle, which is 500 millilitres, um, a pint is 568 millilitres, so you're getting just short of a pint but with a head on it, you kind of get, it fills a pint glass. This is available in every supermarket more or less for about £1.25 a bottle. Um, 
The discount is your Aldi and Lidl. Do it even cheaper than that. I think Aldi, Lidl, about £1.19, £1.20. Um, but it regularly goes on offer in supermarkets for a quid. A quid a bottle. It's great. Four and a half percent. Right, let's delve in there with the canned version and see what we get with the canned version. Now, I'm not quite sure what's happened to this head. It's sort of half died. But it's still quite thick, though. This actually looks a lot more lager-like, you know. That's the type of head you get on a pint of Carling. Maybe Carling drinkers out there that like Carling. Not my cup of tea. It's a nice British beer. It's been brewed for ages. Uh, right then, so it does still look very fizzy though. If you compare that, that looks quite flat. And okay, the head retention on it's not great. If you roll it back and forth, it's soft. It is keeping its head. But that's almost like there's still loads going on in it. A lot of carbonation, they call it. Carbonation's the word I was looking for. Um, right, I'll give it a whiff. Even got some uh, on my nose. Very similar in smell, I have to say. Not, uh, not that much different in smell. We'll uh, go with the tasting then. So, bottoms up all. Save that for later. As the carbonation in the glass would um, make you believe, it does taste a tad bit fizzier. It's less sweet than the bottled version. Quite a bit less sweet, actually. Um, you're still getting a bit of the, the lime. I said it picked up a bit of lemon and lime. You're getting a bit of lime on the side of the tongue. Still there. Um, still very refreshing but it is actually missing a bit of that flavour I don't know if it's the sweetness from the malt because this is less sweet than that I don't think I've ever actually had it can versus bottle before should do this more often I like it it's like a challenge um, yeah Stand by, I'll just uh, have another little sip. Mmm. If you can hear any noise in the background, by the way, that's my boiler kicking in. It's a bit noisy, I hope you don't pick it up on camera. Don't listen to my boiler, do you? Um, yeah, it's still going, look at it. Wow. That is fizzing like a lager in the glass. It doesn't come through in the taste though, I don't feel blown. Sometimes when I drink lagers, another reason why I don't like to drink a lot of lager is it bloats me because of the, because it's so fizzy and gassy. really bloats me and it just sort of stays there. It's almost like getting heartburn. Um, I don't get that with, with real ales and pale ales and things like that. So hence I've kind of gone that way in the taste of beer. I think I moved away from lager in my um, late teens, early 20s. I wasn't on lager for long. Right, so, in terms of the bottle versus can. I'm not gonna lie, I like both. Quite happily drink both. I know uh, there's people that prefer the can, people that prefer the bottle. But supposedly, the, the can version, because it's 4.2%, it's the same strength as the cask version, it's supposed to be exactly the same ingredients or recipe or version. I don't know what you call it in the brew, brewing world. And the, the bottled version is supposed to be uh, a tad different. Still contains the same hops, just must just be brewed under different conditions. Now, a lot of people say, and again, I don't know, I don't work in the beer industry, I'm just a fan, um, that because this is brewed by Marston's and they own breweries all over the UK, the main brewery is up at Burton-on-Trent in Staffordshire. Um, and they, that is their main bottling centre, so they bottle all the beers. From around the UK, all the different breweries that they have, are, I believe, are brewed and bottled at the Burton-on-Trent site. Now, this can version, I'm not sure about the can, 
Um, but if we if we go with the can version, it's the same as the cask. Now, originally the cask version was from the Hob the Witchwood Brewery down in Oxfordshire in Whitney. Uh, however, since it's been taken over by Marston's, I believe it's now brewed at the biggest cask centre for Marston's, which is actually Banks's Brewery in Wolverhampton. In Wolverhampton. Um, so I understand that, from what I've heard, it's only rumours, like I say, I don't work in the industry, but I've heard that the cask version is brewed at um, Banks's Brewery in Wolverhampton. So whether or not the can version is, considering it's supposed to be the same thing or not, I don't know. Um, they're not miles apart, Burton and Wol Wolves, Wolverhampton, they're not, they're not that far apart. However, the water can change. Um, where in Telford and Shropshire we have seven trout water, it's quite limey. Whether or not Wolverhampton has the same sort of um, water source and it is quite limey, they may have to treat it more. I know that Marston's beer, um, the water they have, as I said in my, my um, beer style uh, video, water is the biggest ingredient in beer. So the water quality has to count for something, right? So I understand that um, Marston's original brewery in, in um, Burton on Trent, Staffordshire, uh, there was a process that other breweries would do, and they call it Burtonizing the water because the quality of water at Burton on Trent was supposed to be so good. So does that account for that? Tasting slightly different to that? Could it be the water quality? Could it be the malt? Because that is slightly sweeter, yet leaves more hop on the tongue, whereas this is seems to be a lot fizzier. Not to the point where you get gassed up, um, but it just doesn't seem to be, doesn't seem to have as much going on. Um, and I know friends that love the canned version, and they say they prefer that, they find it more refreshing, whether they stick it in the fridge. These have been out of the fridge about an hour. Um, so I suppose it's bringing it up to what would be the cask or draft temperature. Um, that's actually flummoxed me. I think uh, I've never had them side by side. That's cool. I've learned something. I'm always up for learning something. Right then, so in my opinion then, um, I should have done this on the uh, the first beer review, and I didn't, but I'm all new to this new tube stuff, so you know, don't shoot me. Um, I know there's, there are many other beer vloggers out there, and they give marks out of 10, this, that and the other. Uh, I'm not going to do a mark out of 10, mark out of 5. I'm just going to give it a thumbs up, thumbs down, or thumb in the middle for undecided, just because it's easier to work out that way. So, in summary, Hot Goblin in a bottle, 4.5%. Hobgoblin in a can, 4.2%. They're available at most supermarkets. The Hobgoblin bottle definitely is. The can I've seen in uh, quite a few supermarkets. Um, put it that way, because yeah, there's a Hobgoblin man. Mm. The cans are also available in um, B&M as well, uh, if you're not near to, and as the Tesco, Morrisons, Sainsbury's, Aldi or Lidl. Don't know why you wouldn't be, but if you're not, they're available in B&M as well. Right then. Uh, what do I think to this beer? I like them both, I have to say. I was expecting them to taste very similar. They are a tad bit more different than I thought. But in terms of would I buy it again, would I get it again? Yes, I get it all the time, especially when it's a pound a bottle for the bottle version. I actually prefer the bottle to the canned, um, but I have still got a couple of cans left, so I'll drink them. So, because uh, you can't afford a pack. So for me, it is thumbs up. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you again for another beer review. And we might even get on the decks and play some house music for you in the near future, because it's the Hop House. We love beer, we love house. Ciao for now, people.